Hello, hello. Welcome to Dickens and Quips, the podcast that takes the Poe face out of poetry. Join me, Dee Dickens, as I wander around showing you a world that isn't only populated by old and or dead white men. This week, I have the wonderful Sam Tate with me. Sam is a slam winning poet and writer. He performs regularly at slam events around Kent, as well as hosting a poetry event live lit at the New Inn once a month. He has recently been published by Thanet Writers and Whiskey and Beards. Say hi, Sam. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I am so excited to be having you on first. And the reason I wanted you on first is because when Whiskey and Beards started, um winchester fest you were the first person to ask me to perform so i thought i'd repay the favor oh um, i appreciate it. i had to had to get you in there of course yeah awesome right i met sam at uni slam in march and at a workshop and i have to say he is one of the loveliest human beings i've ever met um whenever my energy started to flag at the event he would be there smiling with hugs and going hello darling and it would just really perk me up so thank you for that as for his poetry you are in for a real treat welcome sam it is an honor to have you on the first episode of dickens and quips that is very kind of you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Are you trying to tell you I'm not kind. I'm honest. But, well, uh, <laughs> but nobody's having that now. To be fair. <laughs> right. So the first, our first ever segment is a segment I'm gonna provisionally call "What You Read Indie," and this week I have been reading from "My Darling" from the Lines by Rachel Long. I was so excited that she was doing a workshop at Unislam this year. So I obviously I booked up and this is where I met Sam. Um, Rachel is an accomplished woman. She is the founder of Octavia Poetry Collective for Women of Colour, based at the Southback Centre in London. She began writing poetry after attending a workshop with Jean Vinterbreeze, a transformative experience she describes as radically intimate and yet simultaneously expansive she says i've been writing poems since that i left that room rachel i know how you feel <laughs> being in a workshop with her she changed how i see myself as a poet and she very much changed my poetry um this collection my darling from the lines is re ridiculously good i rarely read a poetry collection in one go but this one i devoured which seems apt as so much of it is about claiming the world and consuming it with passion and insight my head rang with how good it is and i've since read it over and over it's honest heartbreaking seriously her poem eight in this collection had me in tears and it is as funny as the ridiculously good looking Nigerian in the poem Red Hoover because seriously he definitely got jokes <laughs> so as for which poem I've chosen to share with you there are so many it's already my collection's already my copy's already dog-eared um, but the one I've chosen to read is Night Vigil. It's short but very complex and it took me back to my days of being a choir girl and the complicated relationship between religion and desire. All I can hear right now is ping 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 so it would seem I'd left Phil's email up hopefully that will stop that. Apologies. Ah, there we are. So hopefully that will stop that happening. It's the first one folks. So this is Night Vigil. I was a choir girl, real angel, lightning faced and giant for my age. Mum let us stay up late if we went with her to Night Vigil. It started at midnight, a time too exciting to fathom how the minute and hour stood to attention. During three members' prayer, my sister fell asleep under a chair so she never knew how I sang or how I fell silent when the evangelist with the smiling eyes said in his pulpit voice, Hear, child. 
Had she woken, I would have told her, sleep, sleep, so she'd never know smiling eyes also meant teeth, or that he had blown candles for hands, with which he led me down an incensed corridor, and I followed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Blown, blown candles for hands. Right. Oh, or a pulpit voice, my God, okay. Right? <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> this is, the whole collection's like this, Sam. Like, DM me your address when we finish. I'm gonna send you a copy to say thank you for coming on because like, like this is, this is, I think this is now, I think I've just decided this is what I'm gonna do with my guest poets. I'm gonna send them a copy of whatever I've read that week as a thank you for coming on. So yeah, DM me address when we're done. I will. So, um, so the poem I'm going to read you of my own is one that was very much influenced by the workshop I had with Rachel. Sam will attest to the fact that my poetry can be fast and furious. Um, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> um, the poems you'll you'll find out as we go along with this podcast journey of ours that I can be very much like bang, 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 my poetry. And this one is slow, slow for me, which is very much something that I learned from Rachel is slow down. Exciting. So, so this one is called Orion's Belt. We sat in the pub surrounded by poets conjoined from hip to knee. We walked, smiling, swapping stories of ridiculous siblings giggling. You showed me how to spot Orion by his belt and his disco shoulders, you said. Not sure if it was invitation or starlight in your eyes, I left. On the train home, Orion mocked me from his celestial dance floor. So that's Orion's belt. It's beautiful. Thanks, Sam. I like, I do, I do enjoy the sort of um, uh, mixing the different paces and, and trying to, trying to see it, because you can come up with some really powerful stuff just like that, which is, yeah. But yeah. So, it's a very different skill, I think. Yeah, the Bridget, as Bridget Minimal, who we also had mm. workshops with, when um, she was giving me feedback from one of my heats poems she said now you have to ask yourself d how many poems is this <laughs> so <laughs> it turns out i've got a habit or i did have a habit of putting three or four poems together and calling it a poem but being able to separate it and not being afraid of a shorter poem i think is quite an important skill one i'm still learning i've i've definitely got a few of those it's like there's you could you you know cut this down a bit like separate concepts <laughs> exactly it's like trying to get everything like it's like you're only allowed to write one poem in your life so you best get everything <laughs> in it <laughs> so it's time for the guest interview which is like really boringly named i have to come up with something better <laughs> so are you ready to answer a few questions sam oh yes yeah go ahead Okay, just little questions like, why is poetry important to you? It's just little questions there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I've always uh, found myself wanting to do two things in my life, um, both, both to write and to, to perform, um, whether, you know, acting or I used to do ballet and this sort of thing. Um, and and it wasn't until I was really introduced to poetry that I found this incredible way of combining the two um, and, and being able to express myself um, emotionally in a way that I just had never managed to find before. Um, so poetry gives me an avenue to explore um, some of the areas of, of my life or some of the things that I, I feel and think that I am just incapable of doing elsewhere that, that makes total sense yeah <laughs> yeah it does poetry gives us an excuse i think to be vulnerable yeah yeah that's very true 
yeah i mean i've i've heard a lot of your stuff and there is a real vulnerability to it that is just so endearing i, I love your this i love your stuff there is this whole lack of toxic masculinity it's the absolute opposite of that and i find that beautiful so next question what kind of stuff are you writing at the moment um honestly at the moment not 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 a whole lot um i'm i've become sort of accustomed to the covid world now and i'm trying to vaguely break out of it until we go back into lockdown which i'm sure will happen sooner rather than Absolutely. later um so I, I i haven't been doing anywhere near enough writing um and have been you know trying to edge back into it but i had um at the the start of this whole experience i had like just like a wealth of inspiration come and knock me out of the park a little bit and wrote more than i think i've wrote uh, in my entire life previous to that point um so i'm still still recovering from that um and hoping to get get back into it soon um do you know what part i th always think that part of the writing process is the letting the world sink in mm. it's not it doesn't begin when you pick up the pen or open your computer the writing process starts when you wake up in the morning and you're experiencing the world because what else are you going to write about so. yeah yeah absolutely i think it does take a lot of a lot of time and you actually have to be out there doing things yeah otherwise what are you going to write about it's yeah. like I, ha I had a friend um who talked about going to confession as a teenager and she's like i hadn't done anything what's i supposed to say uh, my brother annoys me and i was mean to my cat <laughs> like sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like unless you're experiencing things what are you gonna write about so next question okay. is are you reading at the moment and if you are what are you reading i i am reading at the moment i i've just finished um uh, Giovanni's Room, uh, which is fr from James Baldwin. So I mean, he's I'm fairly certain he's dead now, but at least. <laughs> so I mean, that's something. Uh, which is it's a stunning book. Um, not not poetry. It's uh, quite a short novel, um, but uh, touchingly, depressingly beautiful. Um, I was also put on to um, a, a poetry book called Night Sky and Exit Wounds by Ocean Ocean Vong. Um, by, uh, by, by Alex Verlis and um, oh my god it's stunning um, one of the the, the the poem I've actually chosen to, uh, to bring today um, is one of his um, not from this collection but he, he has such a way with words it's, it's just incredible and you can just feel the time and and emotion that's gone into the things he's written just stunning Oh, that sounds really exciting. That, that really does. And I agree, it doesn't always have to be poetry we're reading, as long as mm. we're reading. And even if we're not reading, again, this whole idea of, of, of absorbing the world around us, I think is really important. Yeah, I think it's good to find balance with these things. Yeah. Um, you, you do need to spend that time sort of finding, finding your way through things you can try and um, experience other people's ways with particularly with reading and poetry cool right so talking of which what are you going to read for us today is this is this my one or um we'll have your one that you that you've picked and then your own one if that's all right i'd, that's like, I'd like our fine. listeners to be able to to hear your words last <laughs> okay that's cool that works for me um so uh yeah as, as i said I, I picked a poem by um a guy called ocean bong um he's done a whole a whole list of stuff like just an incredible writer uh, night sky with exit moons which is the i was um talking about i think uh, one the ts elliot price in 2017 i just amazing stuff um but this this is uh, a poem of his called A Little Closer to the Edge um, that appears in a 2014 anthology of poetry. Uh, and it's, yeah, well, I'll just read it. Let's see what you think. Cool. Young enough to believe nothing will change them. Step hand in hand, 
into the bomb crater. The nightfall of black teeth so Rolex weeks from shattering against her cheek, now dims like a miniature moon behind her hair. In this version, the snake is headless, stilled like a cord unraveled from the lover's ankles. He lifts her white cotton skirt, revealing another hour. His hand, his hands, the syllables inside them. O oh, father, O oh, foreshadow, press into her as the field treads itself with cricket cries. Show me how ruin makes a home out of hip bones. O oh, mother, O oh, minute hand, teach me how to hold a man the way thirst holds water. Let every river envy our mouths. Let every kiss hit the body like a season, where apples thunder the earth with red hooves, and I am your son. Wow. Yeah, I'm not right. Ooh. 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 That was wow. Yeah, I can, wow. see, I can see why you're into it. Ooh. And what was mm. that from again? Remind us. Um, uh, it's literally just called Poetry, a poetry anthology um, uh, that came out in April 2016. Excellent. What I'm going to do is I will, um, Sam has already agreed to send me details of these and I will put links where I can and information where I can't in the show notes for the show. So if you want to get hold of any of these collections, then you'll be able to. So moment I've been waiting for, what you're going to read for us from yours today, Sam? So I, I, I spent a while trying to choose because I wanted to go for the right thing and I think I've I think I have decided, um, hopefully made the right decision. I wanted to to go for something that's a little bit less slam piece than a lot of the things that I write. Um, but there's definitely a bit in it. Um, but this one is called Helios, um, which I think is amusing. There was a bit of a connection there to the, the star thing, um, Orion's Belt. Um, so, you know, coincidences in that. Um, but this was written over over COVID. It was based off one of the um, the prompts we got from uh, poetry in the time of being alone. Um, that I went on to expand a bit, and I well, I quite quite like it. So yeah, so this is uh, Helios. You are yellow, the colour of sunshine reflecting off the white of my skin. It's blinding. The sunshine finding the Milky Way whites of my eyes. The light was drawn into the dark stone well of my pupils and the colour is muted. What was rock yellow and defiant against the darkness, casting shadows like an exorcist is now less. The shade has become opaque. I can see it, blurring the factory settings of my optical input. I can see through it and I have to wonder what palette the world would take if you took away your filter. Would my eyes sing out in monochrome? Could I ever grow to know the pastel kiss of flowers, the violent strokes of neon, the duality of sky and sea as my feet softly dig into the golden freckles of the beach? Or would I be resigned to graphite? My sight surrendered to the 256 shades of gray. Along the left bone of my hip, love wins is tattooed in the colors of pride. The yellow E is fading slowly disappearing from my skin. Tell me, would the colour ever stand out again? Thank you. Ooh, I love that poem. I was so hoping that you were going to do that one. I'm so oh, Very to nice. Because <laughs> <laughs> obviously I don't want to tell the poets what poem to do, but I was so <laughs> hoping to do that. I love that. The, the vulnerability is there but there's there's a resolve behind the words as well which is i i will get through this i will survive this it's it's gonna be all right which i love it's such a great poem such an apt poem oh, to written over lockdown as well where very much the feeling is i'm gonna have to survive this well yes yeah there's not not a lot of other options is it but that's that is what i was you know trying trying to go for it was through a period of you know, the world is losing a shade of itself, trying to find a way to struggle through it whilst, you know, surviving in the meantime. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for that, Sam. Oh, thank you. you darling. 
<laughs> so next up we have lines that make you go ooh. ooh yeah you know like when when you were reading the poem earlier and we were both going ooh ooh the lines that make you go ooh so <laughs> this week's um this week's is from um communion from rachel long's my darling from the lions and it's very very short line and it hit might not hit you the same way but it hit me as i wrote my dissertation poem seven thousand words on discovering my own blackness and there was a whole section about my hair right a whole section now communion in this book is about rachel on going and getting her hair done in a black hairdresser's and the line is Girl, you're the blackest you might ever be in here. Oh my days, the feels. <laughs> yeah, damn. It just made me go, oh, hit me right where I live. It's like, there is such a disconnect with our hair about how it is, especially when you're mixed race. Is it European? Is it Afro? Is it somewhere between? What's the curl like? Is it acceptable? So that... You are the blackest you may ever mm. uh, It's rare. Brilliant. Yeah. Ooh, damn right. <laughs> so, in the section that I'm now calling Shameless Plug, it's time for you to do a shameless plug. <laughs> Where can we find you? Have you got any books? What are you up to? Are you writing collections for publication? Any services you provide? Are you a proofreader? Do you make a banging cottage pie? Whatever it is, this is your time for the shameless plug. I do have people who can testify to the, the, the quality of mac and cheese, um, but yeah, I'm not sure where that comes in. Um, I, I, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, um, not TikTok because I'm not a child, uh, you know, but fair, but it's not for me. I tried it once. Uh, but yes, I'm, I'm Sam Tate Poet on all of them um, because I was lucky enough to find one name throughout. Um, so yeah, please, please go and give me a like and I post regular videos and poetry, obviously. Uh, on those. Um, I'm currently in the process of writing and editing a collection but I haven't got any out yet um, but yeah that should hopefully be, be, be something that I'm looking forward to in the future um, and yeah so that, that will all be on Sam, Sam Tate Poet. Facebook is probably the main one. Fab, thanks Sam and you've got to love getting all your socials on the same name. I managed it with oh. course too. Just makes yeah. it so much easier. It Not does. Just, it's like, it's just here, just on yeah. all of them. Just take it. Just, yeah, it's just there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what I'm hoping to fit in next week is poetry events that you'd like shared so people can attend them. We get that they're mostly online. Um, it's a shame in a way that I didn't do this podcast earlier because Whiskey and Beards Winchester Fest was among the most amazing, incredible um events it ran for 102 days we had three or four shows a day um it was just an incredible achievement and something that really brought the poetry community together and introduced a lot of people to the form who would otherwise have not been not seen it so mm. what i'd like is um our email is dickinsonquips at gmail.com send me your poetry events that are upcoming and i will feature them on next week's show i will happily do that let's get the world listening to more poetry so um to round up this um next week we have the brilliant joe thomas Ooh. yeah oh <laughs> And I will be reading from Christina Thatcher's second collection, How to Carry Fire. At some point, I will be reading from her first collection, More Than You Were, because she's like my mentor. She's amazing. And her poems are just stunning. So I'm looking forward to that. You're in for a treat. Um, so thank you for listening. Thank you again, Sam, for joining me. It's thank you so much for having me. It's an honour.
It's been such a pleasure. You've made this first episode go really smoothly. And yeah. <laughs> like that. <laughs> so I have been Dee Dickens. You've been marvellous. You can get in touch with the show on dickensandquips at gmail.com or on Twitter at dickensandquips. I'm also on Instagram as yes dickens and quips <laughs> we also got the whole thing going there um my personal my personal twitter if you wanted to chat is the ponty poet i'm also on d dickens poet and author on facebook and please do let me know what's going on in your area if you want to come on the show hit me up and don't forget to subscribe so i can get straight in your log holes on a weekly basis now i'm going to leave you with prompt of the week um this week it is i dance in my own head pop it in an email and i will read one out on next week's show or get the guest to do so so take care and try and make good choices and if you really can't make good choices then make a poem out of your bad ones take care bye bye